There are two things that I would like to mention today. The first is, since we are about to go into Lent, a period of surrendering, a period of letting go, perhaps it is time for us to begin thinking about what it is we would like to let go of so that we may be true disciples. The second thing I <clears throat> want to mention is something that occurred to me on the drive-in this morning. Early in the morning, it's so dark out and it's hard to see and you're in your car and you're driving and your mind is quiet because you're paying attention but yet little thoughts creep in. The thought that crept in my mind this morning is, I'm grumpy when I'm hungry. And I feel the pain of hunger. So if you ever see me grumpy, please, somebody get Father Clay a Scooby snack. You know what I mean when I say Scooby snack? Scooby snacks are small bites of food that you throw out to someone. It could be a candy bar, some pretzels or grapes or anything that helps relieve the pain of hunger and get you back on track. Now, I know I'm not the only one in here who remembers Scooby-Doo. And whenever Scooby was getting out of hand, Shaggy would throw Scooby a snack. And Scooby would say, thank you and get right back on to what he was doing. Scooby Snacks can help calm us down, help relieve the pain of hunger, and get us back on track so that we can push through with the assignment. I don't like pain, not physical pain, not emotional pain, not even spiritual pain. Did you know there was such a thing as spiritual pain? That's when we're wrestling with God or wrestling with the thing that God sent you, disciple. Wrestling with whatever it is that we have to deal with. Like something or someone who came into our life out of the blue. Here's what spiritual pain sounds like for me. When events like someone coming into your life out of the blue that you're just not ready for, here's what it sounds like. Oh, here she is. Now I got to deal with her. Or here he is coming to me, talking all of that stuff with his tired self. Anybody in here know what I'm talking about? You know what I mean? Disciples, have you ever heard of that type of spiritual pain? It's an emotional pain when we have to deal with something that we were not prepared for. Now, some people like pain. They get a high from it. Weird, but who am I to judge? They'll run for miles and miles and miles, even though it hurts. You see, first, they start out with the challenge slowly, running until they encounter the pain. Then they'll acknowledge the pain, but they keep going until they reach the joy of that success. And isn't that what Christ is teaching us? That when we encounter a spiritual pain, that we keep running until we feel the joy of that success. We used to have a saying about that, running when you have pain when I was in the military. So when someone wanted to quit running them long miles with their backpack and 
full gear on. You know, when you're in the military, and I think they call it boot camp, and you're going through this training, you got all this gear on. It's heavy. And you're in combat boots. You're not in Nike sneakers with the cushion sole. Those are hard combat boots. They're heavy. And you got all that weight on your back. It's like the spiritual weight of someone coming into your life that you're not ready to deal with. But in the military, you're running and you want to stop. And there's a whole bunch of you running together. And somebody's going to say, don't stop. Because no pain, no gain. That's what we say in the military. Don't stop. Jesus says, that's what discipleship is like. First, we recognize the call. Accepting the assignment. Enduring the pain. And knowing not only God can, but God will. God will be with us throughout the journey. And oh, what joy it is that comes from traveling with God. As the Reverend Martin, as, I'm sorry, as the Reverend James Cleveland once said, when asked how he does it all, he replied, I walk with God, and I'm no ways tired. I'm a disciple. No one said it was going to be easy. There is a cost to being a disciple of God. How big a cost? Well, that depends on where we are with our spiritual funding. Do you know what I mean when I say spiritual funding? I mean, how much of the Holy Spirit do we already have built up in us? How easy is it for God's Holy Spirit to talk to us and move us in different directions like when the Holy Spirit spoke to Peter, James, and John? If our spiritual funding is low, the cost of discipleship is going to be pretty steep. I'm just saying. Our fears and our anxieties will have an easier time commanding what we do and how we respond. But don't worry. If your spiritual funding is low, you can get a spiritual loan. You just fill out an application and submit it. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> There's no application. And there won't be any interest charges. But there will be a cost. It costs to be a disciple of Jesus. The first cost is we have to let go of something. It's a good thing that we're moving into the period of Lent because it'll be easy to let go of something. We've been practicing this for years. Lent is the time to let go of something something that we've been holding on that's been holding us back, though it didn't seem like it was. It's been holding us back from our spiritual good, our connection with God, our connection with others. It could be anxiety. It could be fear, doubt. But mainly, it's probably our egos. Because egos can get in the way of expressing love, true love, one that is selfless inviting, and full of servitude. You know, it's a funny thing, but if we find that it's easier for children or adults who are childlike to give birth to discipleship with little or no pain, they just seem to spontaneously let go of their egos and serve, or maybe perhaps they don't even have that type of ego. It's a beautiful thing to see. As some of you may know, I've worked in an environment with adults who were severely intellectually and developmentally disabled. For most of them, thinking about or let alone coordinating any type of activity of higher function 
is all but impossible for them. Yet they easily express love and servitude in the joy of togetherness. I saw an interesting thing on YouTube. You know, I don't know what is happening with YouTube, but it has become an addiction. I can be flipping through my phone for something else and YouTube just pops in there and I can't control myself. I gotta watch it. So yesterday, there was a little baby laying down. He was an infant, he had to be an infant. And he was crying and his mother wasn't there. And the puppy who was laying next to him sleep heard the baby crying, got up and licked him on his head. That's love. That's care. I have a story about two individuals that I'd like to share. One is a 62-year-old woman who sat in an old, worn, brown, reclining chair. You know what I'm talking about? We all have something like that in our house. This chair was so worn that I could barely see the color on it. But she loved that chair, and even though her family had spent hundreds of dollars and bought her a brand new chair, she wouldn't sit in it. She sat in the old brown reclining chair. And that goes to say that what happens is when we get comfortable, we don't want to move. I know that's me. But she would sit in that chair with a faded maroon colored blanket over her head and slept most of the day. I don't think she really slept because whenever anything of importance was going on, you'd see her pull it down and look. She wasn't really sleeping. She was mostly nonverbal, though she could get out a few garbled sentences. The only activity that I ever seen her do is take sheets of paper like this, and she would rip them. And then she'd take the ripped pieces and rip them into tiny pieces and drop them in a box. I guess that brought her joy. The other individual was a 55-year-old male who walked around with oversized pieces of puzzles. You know what I'm talking about. You've seen children with them. They're huge. They're like this piece. Each piece of a puzzle is this large. He would walk around with a whole bunch of them under his arm and his hand, yet the whole time that I knew him, I never seen him even attempt to put the puzzle together. I'm not sure he was able to do that. He too was mostly nonverbal. One day, he walked into the room where the blanketed woman had her head covered, and he saw that she had run out of paper to tear. Then he proceeded to her room, brought out pieces of paper, which he gave to her. She pulled the blanket the rest of the way down from her head and started to tear the paper again and put it in the box. And he just walked away. There was no verbal communication between the two of them. He knew what to do. She knew what to do. This is significant because neither of these individuals could even tie their own shoes or even put the shoes on the right feet. Or is it right foot? They couldn't do it without prompting. It goes to show that discipleship is not just for the learned. God's love knows no boundaries. Even that population understands and can express love through servitude. We don't have to have a degree in relationship building or take courses in discipleship to serve and connect with others. We just need to look outside ourselves, look outside the circles that we travel in, and the things that we limit ourselves to and feed God's people, not just with food, but with selfless love. Let's call it discipleship. Yet remembering that some are harder to feed than others, still enduring that pain 
and knowing that our application for spiritual funding has been reviewed and it is taken seriously by God. So listen to the call of the Holy Spirit for you to serve. It may be to sing in the choir. It may be a call to rejoin or rekindle a ministry. Go ahead and take it. Endure it. Take on that pain. And perhaps you, too, will receive a Scooby snack to get you through the pain of discipleship.